So in this video, we are going to set up a Spring Boot 3 project from scratch and do some minor configuration of Spring Security. If you haven't checked out the series intro, I encourage you to do so because I do include some information of what you're going to find in this series, so it is quite important that you know that. But without further ado, let's kick off this series and let's go to the computer. Now at the computer, let's start a completely new Spring project from scratch so that you know exactly what's going on. Let's call it API login and let's place it under com.example group. That is totally fine. We're going to use Java 17 because that is the latest LTS release. Now let's just press next. So what are we going to need for this uh, tutorial? We're going to need Lombok, of course. We're going to need Spring Web, and we're going to need Spring Security. Let's check those and let's press Create. The new project has loaded and let's turn off the help and let's see if it actually works. The project builds and launches and we can go from here. Just in case you're not following from scratch, let me show you what dependencies are actually added in Gradle. So we have our uh, Spring Boot Starter web and we have uh, Spring Boot Starter security. This is what actually secures our system. And as standard, we have Lombok and then we have some test implementations. Spring Boot Starter test that comes by default and Spring Security test will also be required soon. As our first step, let's make a simple controller. So I'll just right click on the root package and let's do a controller package and let's create a hello controller. Let's mark this as a rest controller and give it a required args constructor. Let's do a public string greeting and let's put a root get mapping on this one and let's just return hello world. Let's run the application and let's bring in Postman just to check it. And let's do HTTP localhost 8080 because that's the port that Spring is running on by default and you can also see it down here. And we are getting unauthorized and that is because Spring security is enabled by default. So let's deal with that. Inside my application package I will create a new package called security and this is where I am going to add a new class called web security config. Let's mark this class as a configuration and let's also add annotation enable web security. If you worked with Spring Boot before, uh, this has changed in Spring Boot 3. So let me guide you through what has changed. So back in the days you need to, you needed to do uh, extends the web configurer adapter that has been deprecated and removed in Spring 3. So what has replaced it is a bean of type security filter chain. And let's just call this bean application security. And this is where you inject HTTP security from Spring Framework security config annotation web builders. Let's do that. Let's call it HTTP. Now inside it's almost the same as it used to be before. Get your injected HTTP, do a dot and just for this tutorial let me disable course and let me disable CSRF. If you don't know what those mean don't worry about it, it's out of the scope of this tutorial. Just do it with me. All right, let's continue. Do a session management 
session creation policy stateless. As you know, REST APIs should be stateless and that is exactly what this configuration parameter does. All right, let's pause for a brief moment here. Course is throwing an exception. So let's just uh, propagate that to throws exception so that it does not show an error. And what should be returned? This bean should actually return an http.build. And now nothing is complaining. So we can continue with our configuration. Let me bring in my browser real quick. If you go to localhost 8080 slash login, you get presented with this login form. And by default, Spring Security gives you this form where you can enter username and password and they will, might say, save a session and log you in. Let's disable that. We're creating an API, so we don't need a form login. In your security config, let's uh, do an and after session creation policy. And let's, uh, let's do form login dot disable. So this will get rid of that form. And we can probably even check it immediately. If I run the application and get my browser, refresh, now this page is 404. Let's continue building our security config. After form login, let's uh, make a security matcher slash and then two asterisks. So what this does is it basically makes this whole configuration work on your whole application. If you only work under slash API, for example, you could do this. But since we're working in the root, I'm just going to make it a slash star star. Now, this is the interesting part. Authorize HTTP requests. And as this method argument, you have a functional interface or a Lambda authorization manager request measure registry. Let's just call it uh, registry for short. Let's do an arrow and do registry again. And now you can continue with your request matchers. So let's write our first request matcher and allow the root page to actually be viewed by anyone. Let's do request matcher, request matchers. Just do a simple string slash. And after request matchers, do permit all. So what this will do, it will make this exact path, which is our root path, accessible for everybody. Let's run the application and let's try it out if it works. This time around, I will bring a postman and I will just do a get localhost 8080. And now it says, hello world. So this endpoint is now accessible for everybody. Let's continue configuring our application. Do any request, and this will basically match any request. So it's like an else on an if statement and do a dot authenticated. And this will make it so that any request that is not explicitly allowed, a user will need to be authenticated for that. So here you can see our initial config is very, very small and it fits in one screen. And now you have the project running and Spring Security configured. In the next video, we're going to issue a JWT token and make a fake login for our user. Before you click off, please leave a like on this video so you can refer back to it later. And if you like this kind of content, maybe consider subscribing. Now you can click off to the next video.